All right, I start the recording. It is 11 o'clock, so we can start. Uh, just uh, to let you know, we are recording this. If you don't want to be on the recording or don't want the recording with you in it on YouTube, then just send me an email and I will not upload it or remove it. So you can let me know at any time. So welcome everyone for our Chaos Hangout. We don't have an agenda today. We are just going to talk about whatever uh, you all bring up. So uh, I'll, I'll just ask, is there anything you want to talk about today? So maybe we can just leave. <laughs> well, I have uh, I have a few things on my mind. I just want to give others a chance first. So if no one else has anything, um, we are. Uh, George, sorry, uh, I just remembered something which is important, which is related to the chaos con, and is this thing about we want to uh, to uh, get money from no souls. I mean, ask money for them. Or not, because I think it's the only decision that we need to do to to find to finalize the, the the form for the subscription to the conference. Yes, as a background to everyone who is not on the ChaosCon organizing committee, we are setting up the registration form with the Linux Foundation and integrating it with the Open Source Summit North America registration form so that everyone registering for the big event can add ChaosCon as an add-on. And the concern of making ChaosCon free is that people sign up for it and we have um, way exceeding numbers from people who actually will show up because there's no, no incentive for them to actually show up uh, or not sign up if they don't really intend to show up. So the solution proposed is to have a no-show fee where we, where we incur a cost for people who register but don't show up and thereby hopefully filter out everyone who is not sure if they really want to be at ChaosCon and only sign up if they actually do want to be there. So the, the main problem that I saw and, and somebody commented that is that the Chaos Con is going to be in the list of items uh, when people subscribe to the OSS. And since it's going to be free, many people are maybe are tempted to just click there because they don't bother to match whether they come in or not, but it's free, so I, I just click. And then maybe we are going to have an apparently full room and we cannot get more people attending, but half the people don't show up. And uh, that's my main concern, as um, I think that we don't even need to really charge people after the event if they don't show up. It's just saying something like, if you don't show up, maybe somebody's going to, 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 to charge you $10 or something like that. So my initial thought was that I want to keep ChaosCon free and not, not charge anything and that having this penalty for signing up and not being able to show up is kind of cruel but I, I understand the concern and I agree with you and so yeah I, I don't mind if we charge a no-show fee of ten dollars or whatever. Is there some kind of precedent inside the LF for? Doing yeah, I mean, we we typically do that for a lot of developer events that are. I mean, all of our. I mean, most of the developer events are free, but I mean, we actually have a charge of like fifty dollars, something pretty substantial. So people think actually think about it, and then, I mean, you can always cancel. Like we have a grace period, like up to like a twenty-four or forty-eight hours before. Okay. the event that you can you can cancel uh at any time if you if for some reason your your plan changes and i mean i i think you know you we can debate about the amount but i mean if it's like if it's more than 20 dollars, i think people think twice because you have to actually enter your credit card information um 
So by you know, by forcing people to enter their credit card information, people really think about it. Like, you know, is what's the likelihood of me actually making this event, right? So yeah, uh, okay. it's not as much as, and I don't think like for people who didn't show up for whatever reason, like two or three people, I'm not sure. Like for some of the events that I've been involved in, we actually like enforce the no show fee because I mean, what are we going to do with like fifty bucks, right? But it at least at least gives people a pause when they register rather than just blindly like, clicking the box. I think I think that sounds like a good idea. Then I, I mean, if as long you know, if it's been done before and it won't yeah. be the first time people are seeing it, then yeah, I think there's. It sounds like there's just a for for planning purposes a significant advantage to yeah. having that. Is it possible to waive that to, to some specific people like uh, students, for instance, or people with low income or something like that? Uh, I mean, that, I, I think we can fix it by making the amount like relatively low, right? I mean, maybe like around $20. Um, but I mean, I'm not sure if, you know, if it's a good idea to just give, you know, students a uh, pass. Because I, mean, I, I, I mean, I think the preference is to have everyone really think about you know you know i mean they're making a commitment to come here like i want them to honor their commitment if they decide to register but yeah you're right yeah. okay okay so yeah. twenty dollars is that the going rate it seems as reasonable as anything i think i mean twenty dollars fifty dollars i'm inclined to not yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Jesus, can you reach out and uh, make sure that we get that implemented? Yeah. Perfect. Of Thank you. While we're on the topic of uh, ChaosCon, I'm going to share with you all the link to our website. So in the chat is a link. And it is for the ChaosCon website and where you see the schedule. This is our schedule that we have right now. And I will update this tonight so that tomorrow we have all of the talks and presenters in here. So we are still in the phase of confirming that everyone who submitted a proposal actually has time to uh, present and the schedule will update tomorrow then. And one thing we changed from uh, our last ChaosCon is to have more time for just networking and talking to each other in between sessions. The morning is more uh, dominated by talks and we want to do those in one big room concluding with the panel and then after lunch we start up with lightning talks just five minute uh, short presentations that we will assign at the conference so people can sign up on the day of the conference for these and then the afternoon is all about workshops tutorials and then we can go, all go out and have a beer in the evening perfect I know the best part. So that's where we are with the planning of ChaosCon. If anyone has a sponsor that they would like to bring on, we are still open to have a sponsor. So maybe Peterja is interested in sponsoring coffee or something like that, but I would, I would kind of need a budget or something to, to submit to, to the company. Okay, so we'll put together a budget and then we know what amount. But that's something maybe we can try to, to prepare a, a, a small budget by email and then asking maybe Victoria, maybe some other people whether they want to pay a part of that or something like that in the past. When we were organizing uh, Grimoire Con, Mozilla paid something, uh, 
some sometimes so something like uh, cookies or stuff like that okay so we'll take this back to the chaos con organizing committee put together a budget and look for sponsors continue looking for sponsors yeah i think so Any other questions on ChaosCon? Anyone else? Yeah, I have one. Like yes. What type of contribution we are seeking right now for Chaos? Are you talking about Chaos in as the project or specifically about the ChaosCon conference that we are planning in August? No, the project. Okay, that's a good question. So what we did in, uh, within the Chaos Project is we have um, working groups that are really the best place to uh, start contributing. Sean, do you want to uh, present the Growth Mature and Incline working group and where you need help there? Um, the Growth Maturity and Decline working group is, um, I think we've had two or three meetings so far. And we are working on implementing and prototyping metrics that indicate growth maturity and decline. And you can find those in the WG-GMD, which is work group dash growth maturity and decline in the chaos organization on GitHub. We are right now working on describing a process for engaging um, community managers and others. I'll be participating in the community leadership summit um, out in Portland uh, later, I guess next month. And, and so we're just, we're really at the very beginning of, you know, we have a lot more implemented because we can get it from trace data and we have a lot of prototyping done. And now we're actively seeking feedback on, on those items. So we're really interested in engaging program managers, community managers uh, that are looking for displays of those kinds of metrics and uh, have a few prototypes that I plan to share with the group. And I know that Jesus has been sharing um, updates on some Paturgia changes uh, along those lines as well. I don't know if mm -hmm. Jesus, you wanna add anything because you're also part of that group. Yeah, so just to, just to say that we are trying to implement the uh, metrics from scratch um, since we have Percival, which is a part of Remote Lab and is capable of getting the data from the original data sources like GitHub or, or Git, what we are trying to do is to implement the metrics based on the Percival output, which basically is a reproducible a method for knowing what the metrics should be, and at the same time trying to learn the different parameters that could impact on the metric, like for instance in the case of, in a very simple case, which is Git commits like uh, do we consider merge commits or commits in master branch or, or what kind of commits exactly so what we are doing is writing python notebooks based on that so in the different uh, uh, possibilities and at the same time we're in, in the context of the google summer of code uh, project we are implementing reports on those metrics and uh, we are rethinking the metrics from that point of view and we have had a very interesting discussion, for instance, on, on what to do when we do have a fraction for the metric and uh, uh, the denominator is zero, which means it cannot be calculated and, and how to do with that. And, and that kind of a step to, so trying to make the, the metrics practical, that's all. Okay. I can see this repository that you have created. Uh, like you can't find contribution.md. Like, how can one start the So I would say if you want to start uh, contributing in code, I mean in software, it would be a matter of looking at the different projects that we have, uh, Grimoire Lab, Regit, or Augur, and uh, have a look at which, which parts of them are interesting to you and start to uh, working with them. We have some presentations of those 
And if needed, we can point you to, to some of those presentations. If, on the other hand, you are more interested on the metric side, let's say the, the, the definition of the metrics and how metrics can be useful and all of that, it's more a matter of uh, reading out the current uh, the current work in the in the workgroups, either the GTE or the inclusion groups, which are the two most active now, and uh, try to find out in which metrics you want to contribute. Most of the stuff is happening in either weekly meetings or issues and pull requests in GitHub. I don't know if you need more specific um, information. So I can after this call, but uh, if uh, we can have a Gitter channel or Slack channel for this, do we have one? Sorry, can you repeat? Can you repeat? Gitter channel or Slack channel, I mean, for discussion. Uh, so I'm sorry, I don't understand. You're still very quiet. Ah, am I? Now, okay? Yes, it's better. Yeah. I'm asking just for Gitter or Slack channel. Do you mean right in the back end for that? No, I, I think the question was more on like a communication channel. Um, ah, yeah. okay. I yeah, see. yeah. We, I mean, I we see. do have an IRC channel, but um, you don't have Slack or or others. But I have started working with um, the Augur team in Slack, just because its persistence and ability to file share is easier for us to manage. Um, so I would be happy to invite folks into that. I know it's. Uh, I mean, we tried IRC, and we just uh, we had trouble with non-persistence um so for for the rest i think that the mailing list is the most uh, yeah, um, very active effective. part so yeah uh, both for the metrics part and for grimoire lab so th this was the growth metron decline working group and we have uh, one more working group that i know you already know and that's the diversity and inclusion working group the one where um, where Emma is uh, participating and Daniel is uh, leading up the work there and in the diversity and inclusion work group if you want to get started we have several pull requests I'm posting the uh, github repository in the chat so if you just want to go to the poll requests, comment on the poll requests and help us refine the metrics. So we are a little at an earlier stage from the growth mature and decline work group because in diversity and inclusion, we only recently uh, started nailing down what metrics we want to look at. And once this is what the poll requests we have right now are all about. And the next step would then be to figure out how to get the data, how to implement it. Mm -hmm. and, but we are not quite there yet in the diversity and inclusion work group. Okay. Cool. And then we have two more work groups that we are planning to, um, to, to start up. One is on the category of value and one is on the category of risk. Uh, but there's currently no active work group. So if you want to get started on those, if those are most interesting to you, you can um, just take them on and start up the work group and that's possible as well. Yeah, can you post a link for that? Um, those uh, don't have a um, repository yet because we don't have an active work group yet. What I can send you is the metrics repository. Mm -hmm. And this is where all the groups, all the categories of metrics that we have are, and then each category maps to one work group. Did this uh, give you a good enough idea on how you can get involved in chaos or do you have additional questions? Not for today it's enough. I had trouble 
understand you, but I assume that was a thumbs up. All is okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, awesome. Uh, Matt had right. sent me an email. He wanted to um, wanted me to bring two things to the table. One is that the Linux Foundation is moving the mailing lists to group.io. So our mailing lists will change. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it should be pretty, for most people, it should be pretty transparent. I mean, I've, I've been using groups.io for, for a different project that I'm involved in. And I mean, for most users, you're not going to notice a whole lot of difference. I mean, the mail email address will stay the same. All the archives will be migrated over, and uh, your subscription preferences will will be migrated over. In, in addition to all the subscribers, uh, so from a day to day perspective, if you're sending emails to, I mean, various mailing lists, it, it's all going to work the same. The only people that would notice the difference would basically be the administrators like Georg or one of the admins for some of the mailing list. Uh, you'll actually have a better UI versus mailman. Um, but I mean, for the rest of the people, the, you're probably not going to notice a whole lot of difference. There'll be like a couple of hours of down, downtime as we migrate the uh, mailing list over. And um, I think the number is about 27 projects that are already gone through the migrations. And they've, uh, I don't believe there have been any hiccups. So. So that raises one question in my mind. We talked about maybe four or five months ago about moving the mailing list to a, to a mailing list that has chaos in its mail, email name because we are still using a list from before chaos was officially, uh, before we had the name and chaos was founded. Is this a good time to maybe switch to something like Chaos Discuss as a main? Uh, yeah, I mean, potentially. I'm thinking maybe it's easier to just do the migration and change the name later, uh, but I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, I, I feel that we yeah. should need to change at some point. I don't know if this is the, the, good, the good moment for, to, for that or not. But if you look in, in, in Google, for instance, for chaos mailing list or something, it's difficult to find out. So I think that at some point we need to change the name to chaos this chaos or maybe chaos. And uh, but uh, Ray, if you feel this is not the right moment because of all the yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, that's a better question for IT. Like, uh, I don't know if it's easier to change it on Mailman and then migrate that over, or do it like the other way around. Do the migration first and change the name later in Groups IO. Uh, so I know that we had, or you helped uh, Ray with setting up the. A new mailing list. We just never moved everyone over because we had concerns about the mailing list archive. So if this is something that now, since they're touching the mailing lists, we could do is move the archive and change the name at the same time. Um, maybe you can ask if the yeah. I'm not sure if they're related. related. I mean, archives just all going to just move over. Uh, so. But I'm not, I mean, I can certainly ask, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me just ask him and see what they have to say. So if you want to ask and, and uh, let us be in uh, uh, CC so that we can follow yeah. up later. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have to leave. So uh, sorry for leaving early today. See you later. Yeah, have a good day, Jesus. Thank Bye, you. Jesus. Bye. 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 Okay, so that's the update on the mailing list. And the other thing Matt had uh, wanted me to bring up is that uh, the governance board is planning a meeting at the Open Source Summit in North America. So that's just a, an announcement. Anything else going on? Any other thoughts or anything? 
Anyone of you want to share? I am okay with, you know, I'm, I don't have anything. All right. Since I don't hear anyone else, um, I assume we are good. We can hang out a little bit longer, but there's definitely no obligation here since we are <laughs> at our weekly hangout with no agenda. And so if you want to do other things, feel free to drop off. I'll stay on a little bit longer. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Uh, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, I'll stop the recording since everyone is leaving.